Hey there good people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tsekho and today I've got a special guest with me, Ishen. Is it Ishen? Yeah, it is Ishen. Ishen. And uh, we're going to be talking about these uh, two beautiful cameras, the RB67 and the Zenza Bronica. So we did a camera swap, so I shot on this camera and Ishen shot on this camera. So what I'm trying to find out is, well, what he thought of the, of the RB and uh, yeah, so first impressions? Yeah, the RV is extremely heavy. Uh, it, was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was weird like carrying it around. Um, also another thing with the RV is the rotating back for me is a huge selling point. I think, um, I think especially in a portrait environment for what we were shooting, that was the biggest thing for me. I could keep my camera kind of like leveled and it helped with the waist level finder because I don't have a waist level finder. So it was, it was easier for me to compose my image by rotating the back rather than flipping the camera and trying to compose an image like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so for me, definitely, I think this is the perfect size um, for a camera, for, mm. for a medium format camera, actually. Uh, it's easy to take around, mm. uh, but yeah, Again, the one thing that was a bit of a disadvantage is when you take a portrait, you have to kind of like tilt it to its side like that. Uh, but I like that you still have that option, even mm -hmm. though it is, it is a bit of a weird situation. I love that you still have that, that option. Yeah, the thing, the thing with the Bronica and the reason why I have it over the 6.7 is because it's modular as well. Like I can take the back off, I can take the prism finder, I can get a waist level finder. It's completely modular. And with the 645, I feel like I can push out a little bit more of the portraits that I really want. So those, those five extra shots that I can get on this camera oh, really, definitely. really, really are the main selling points for why I got the 645. Yeah, those extra shots do come in handy, you know. Uh, I mean, here after 10 shots here, you're done. But, uh, the biggest difference is that the the negative size. Yeah, you do get much bigger negatives, uh, negatives yeah. on this versus on the Bronica. Yeah. Uh, but those extra five shots do come in handy, and I've learned to love more medium format uh, photos than 35. Yeah, no, no I've also. Uh, so for me, the next step would be to get a six four five, and the size just makes sense, you know. Yeah. Um, between this and the Mamiya 645, which one do you think would you get? Having shot with this and having shot with Mamiya and the ergonomics of a Bronica and ergonomics of a Mamiya, which I think, one would I think it would, would it, be, it would be more or less the same, yeah. uh, the 645 version. Um, it, it, it should be more or less the same as the Bronica. Maybe the glass might be a little bit different, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think it should be more or less um, the same. I would love to get me like another Mamiya, like a 645. Yeah. Um, then I know my, my setup would be like complete. Mamiya. But it would be more complete <laughs> if I get a Leica, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag sponsor. That's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a topic for another day. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, man, like uh, for me, my impressions of the Bronica, um, like I said, I love the size. I love the five extra shots that you get on it. Um, the advanced knob is similar to my tlr yeah my tlr camera no no the yashika is actually a knob oh. the roly flex is, oh yes, yes you yes, get yes, that yes. wind and then you, that's why when i, when yeah, I was advancing i tried back. to rewind because <laughs> yeah that's where that's where i get it from yeah um but yeah like the size is what sold me on these uh, on this camera yeah. so this would make a great um travel camera in my opinion yeah for medium format you yeah. can you can lug it around i took this thing down to cape town to durban with me so and it just like fits right in the bag it's yeah it's yeah, like yeah really really compact for medium format camera definitely i think it's almost the same size as the tlrs almost um, yeah, yeah it's basically. almost the same size but with the tlr you only get 12 shots in so this still wins you get mm -hmm. uh extra shots in and yeah man the size the size is yeah big sell for me the, the another thing with the bronica is that it comes with three different backs so it comes with the 120 back a 220 back well rip 220 and it comes with the 135 millimeter back so you can get like um so there's actually like 
a comparison between the 135 and an X-Pan, and yeah. it's basically almost the same. Oh, for real? Yeah, so the, so you can put a 135 on here and the X-Pan, the aspect ratio between the X-Pan and 135 so back on this is pretty much very similar. Yeah. It's like very, very minimal difference. So would the quality on, the, on this one be better? compared to the X-Pan? It really depends on like the types, like also exposure. I feel like that's very like subjective, but um, <laughs> I feel if you don't want to spend money on an X-Pan, you can get a 135 millimeter back, but okay. to also find that is a bit of a struggle. Mission, yeah. yeah. Especially here in South Africa. Yeah, I can imagine. So, but, or you can just do sprocketing. I mean, that also there is that option. Yeah, I actually 3, 3D printed something. Oh, for real? Yeah. 3D printed sprocket. I'm looking forward to it because I mean the your advanced knob is uh, <laughs> it's 3D, 3D print. printed. <laughs> we should show them that it has my <laughs> it even has his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gypsy. <laughs> so uh, yeah man, that's what I enjoyed about the camera. And uh, the images obviously were uh, processed and scanned by the film cartel. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So yeah, man, let's start with your pictures, what you thought of the final pictures that came out of the Mamiya. Um, first of all, focusing on the Mamiya was really difficult for me. Uh, really? I found, it, I found it to be a little bit more challenging than usual <laughs> because I'm not used to a waist level finder. Uh -huh. um, usually I'm in the viewfinder, so it's, so it's true, very, true. very different. But um, nailing focus, um, we were shooting Primarily at 125th at around f5.6. Yeah, um, most of the most the of the, most of, the, that most day, of yeah. the shots that we were shooting are around that settings. Um, but we had um, one or two dips and things. But I I try to push the aperture as low as possible. I think the Mamiya went down to 3.8 or what is it? 3. Point... It's a 3.8. Yeah, 3.8. So I would try to push the camera down to around three or four. And, um, but the Mamiya shots were crisp, they were clear. There was very, very, like, how do you say this, very little vignette on the, on the camera. Mm -hmm. I found that the, the image itself was almost like a digital photo. It was, that's very how- Very crisp, yeah. That's how clear it was. Yeah. And um, after plonking into Lightroom and doing some basic corrections, um, I really enjoyed some of the close-up photos that I took. I felt like when you nail focus on the Mamiya, it's like it's like a huge you, you, just, you deserve a huge, a, accomplishment, yeah, a huge yeah. accomplishment. You deserve a medal for <laughs> nailing focus <laughs> on the Mamiya. Um, but I really loved the close-up shots that I got, yeah. and uh, also I took a portrait of you, which is also one of my favorite. However, oh, I did wow. miss I did miss focus, focus slightly, yeah. slightly, just a little bit. Um, but it's one of my favorites of, uh, that I took from that day as well. Yeah. For the record, I actually haven't seen these images, so I'm only <laughs> going to be seeing them when I get home uh, and editing the, the, the video. But uh, yeah, as for me, the focusing on the Bronica was very similar to using a regular 35mm yeah. uh, camera. The focusing was quite easy. Mm -hmm. Well, not too easy, but like quite easy. I think the, the, the one of my toughest shots was uh, shooting Christiana with the dog. I think the, that picture there, that's where it was a little bit dodgy. Yeah. But I managed to capture the moment yeah. and the mood of that particular time. So I, I think that kind of covers up for me missing the focus, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But uh, I really enjoyed using this camera. It was challenging, especially when you shoot uh, the yeah the, when you flip your camera because i think 90 percent of the time it's actually shooting in portraits yeah if not more so you'll actually see it on the images but um the images are so crispy you know like almost similar to the the mamiya 
um, it's actually quite a great uh, little camera that. Yeah. I underestimated it. <laughs> um, I obviously recently just got this and I've only put like a couple of rolls through it. Mm. Um, the one thing I've noticed when focusing is that it's very similar to my Canon F1, mm -hmm. uh, where the Canon F1 is known for how great its focusing screen is, especially the A, A glass focusing screen. Um, so basically the focusing screen on this is very similar, except it doesn't have that center circle yes, or, yes, any, yes. or any guidelines. Yes. And um, I think that plays a major part, that center circle, for really nailing that focus. But um, when it comes to like a general area of focus, if, you, if you're focusing on a person's face and that comes into focus on the Bronica, you kind of know like you're in this area and then you're just tweaking it until you get that that's final true. point. Um, I mean, I find, it does take a little bit longer. Yeah. That's one thing I've noticed. I find that it does, um, takes longer to find focus find on focus, this definitely. rather than on a 35 millimeter uh, Yes, camera. yes, you're absolutely and, right. Um, but I think when yeah. you nail it, especially at uh, 2.8, yeah, you really you get like that great um, um, depth, depth of field, field you know, yeah. so it's, actually quite sharp like I mean this image as also was at 2.8 yeah this was at 2.8 slightly insane. out but I think so the depth of field is, is there so this was one of them that I took these are the close-up ones um, if I zoom in it's like almost in focus like I think I nailed for the back eye which is yeah um, then all of these ones or all of these close-ups ones that I got. This was the only close-up one that was slightly out of focus. And it had to be a picture of you. It had to be a picture of you. I focused on your nose though. Man. So you can crop the your hates. nose. The hate. <laughs> <laughs> but your first shots are, are bangers. So. Thanks man. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, from the 20 photos that I took, um, I was happy with 17 of them, which is quite an achievement I wow. think. So I was, I was pretty happy with the 17 of them and I edited like 17 of them. I think so. it's the medium format factor. You know, I think I just made that up. Yep. But the fact that you actually have less shots to play with will actually make you a better shooter with those yeah. 10 shots. So, so your strike rate will be a lot higher than yeah. when, you're shooting for, uh, when you're shooting on 35. Yeah, no, that's definitely why also why I got into medium format as well is because I wanted to slow down especially when I shoot. Having a limited number of shots, especially if I'm go only going to be shooting one or two rolls of film, mm -hmm. uh, it's 30 pictures on this, or if I'm shooting one roll, it's 15 pictures, which is nothing, but in a whole day shoot, if I'm yeah. shooting 15 pictures, those 15 pictures have to be the best 15 pictures of my life. And that's also kind of no, why I, you. I wanted to get into medium format and also why taking what I know from medium format and taking it back to 35 millimeter for mm. some of my future projects, you know, I'm, I'm think taking my time in shots is one of those things that I really, really wanted to improve on. And uh, working with the Mamiya also helped me realize that having five less shots, you have to take even more time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. So, so with the Mamiya, I started a project with, um, with my grandmother. Mm. So I started documenting her. Uh, each time I go visit her, I'll take the, the Mamiya. You know, she, she gets a little bit impatient with me, but when, she, when she's got all the patience in the world, yeah. she makes the best model, uh, <laughs> hands down, you know. Uh, and I won't lie, like, a lot of the pictures that I've taken with the Mamiya, on a roll of, on a roll with the 10 shots that I have, about eight of them yeah. are straight up bangers. You know, so this is definitely uh, a camera for, for projects, I, yeah. I don't know about people that carry this thing around. Um, yeah, Vilanda's RZ. Yeah, it's it's actually crazy how people carry these big cameras around and do yeah. environmental portraitures. I mean, it's it's absolutely great for portraiture, um, and I think that's why they made these these yeah. cameras. You know. Yeah. But to carry it around is just a little bit too much for me. But for that project with my grandmother, it's that perfect tool yeah to for, for that especially for that project which is so yeah. sentimental to you yes, as well yes, yes. anything else um would you get the bronica that's the question would you get the bronica i think if it's nicely priced 
definitely. Um, especially for that 645 factor, the size. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I definitely would. Okay. I just wish it, it had a rotating back. Oh, that's a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can take your film out like this when the back is out, obviously, and then you can just put it like that. And you can just expose your whole roll of film. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, do you have, do, do, do these, do you get um, waist level uh, you finders? Do. So you do get a waist level finder. Um, so this camera, like I said, is completely modular. There's the prism finder. Um, I have a prism for this, you know that? I know, I saw. Yeah. And then uh, this is the focusing screen. So the focusing screen also comes out. Oh snap, look at that. So you can change your focusing screen. Um, you get different focusing screens. That's why I also liked this camera a lot was because of the ability to customize it. You know, if I wanted to shoot a 135. This man is selling me this camera. You know. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then I can shoot it. And it has like a little lock, which is great. Like a lock to lock yeah. the focusing screen in. Um, yeah. Damn, that's pretty dope, I won't lie. You can get a metered finder for this camera as oh, well. Oh, I see there, yeah. Uh, I think this camera has quite a few accessories. Obviously, I had the the handle grip oh yeah with it as well you've um, got a um, auto motor drive motor drive yeah. i've got a motor drive for this camera um i, I didn't use that i felt like i need to i need yeah. to get in touch with the camera you know what i find is when i'm using this camera for like walking around if i'm going to be shooting and i'm not going to be in one place i will use the motor drive it's mm -hmm. just easier to carry it does add a bit of weight to it. It, it. I think it's almost the same as the Mamiya, I would say. Oh, for real? Yeah, if I add the motor drive, because it has batteries in it. So yeah. It's quite heavy at the bottom. Um, so if I'm going to be walking and stuff, I'd use a motor drive. I think it's just easier, mm. you know. So, yeah. Do you think um, the 645 was made for portraits or for landscape? To be honest, I think it's a mixture of both. I think certain 645 cameras were made for landscape photography. I think the Bronica itself was made for landscape, if I'm being completely honest, because I have shot some landscape photos on this, and uh, I think I've enjoyed that more <laughs> than my portrait shots. But I think it's because of the the, the, the landscape the aspect format ratio. Already, yeah. yeah, and I think where, when it comes to 6.7 and 6.6. Um, I think 6.6 six is actually a very good portrait camera rather yeah. than a landscape camera. But the landscapes you can get on a 6.6 six is it's just also, also crazy. In crazy. I mean, I've seen um, some of Simon's work as well. Yeah, Simon, Simon's been... He just been... nails landscape along with Brandon as well. So yeah. those guys are the kings of landscape. I wish I could shoot landscape <laughs> as well as I shoot portraits. So. Same. Uh, <laughs> landscapes, landscapes has been my biggest downfall. Mm -hmm. However, architecture and street photography has been some of my best work when it comes yeah. to landscape stuff. So architecture, just being like, I travel to Europe, some of my Europe photos were some mm -hmm. of my best photos. Um, but um, I think the 645 was meant for, if I'm being completely honest, landscapes. landscapes yeah. Because of that aspect ratio. But just because something is Made for one thing. Made for one thing doesn't mean you can't use it Definitely. for another thing. I think the I'm, I'm all for breaking the rules. Exactly. Um, but another thing with the photos that I noticed was when you crop a photo for Instagram on a 6.7 versus 6.45. Oh, you don't six, crop. You don't crop here. <laughs> you don't, it's like. It's just me. It's just a little bit off the top. Yeah. And. Um, Whereas when you crop something like this, it's actually quite a big hefty crop. It's, yeah. Um, so, but I mean, if you're gonna buy this camera just for Instagram. Oh no, you're not doing it point? justice. You're not doing anything. If, if I'm being completely honest, if I'm gonna buy this camera, I'm gonna be printing the stuff really big. I'm more yeah. gonna be exhibiting it or yeah. you know, having it in magazines hopefully one day. Yeah, I've actually printed a few images from this mm. and they came out like beautifully. Yeah, I haven't printed anything from this because it's so recent. Yeah. Um, but I have printed... But do yourself a favor, maybe select like three images that you absolutely love and print them. But print them a little bit bigger that you would, than you would normally do. Yeah. Than, than you would normally print, you know. And just look at those images for a couple of days and, and come back to me. 
I will definitely. I um, I don't know if I would do that because I feel like if I print something bigger, it's not going to be as good. Like no, no, it will be. Would. It will be. You think so? It will be. You'll be surprised. I mean, it is a medium format camera, yeah. so you can get away with printing it a little bit bigger than you yeah. you, you normally would. You know, um, the last images that I printed were about thirty centimeters. Yeah, that's about eight three. Yeah, because of this aspect ratio, it's, it's a little bit off from A3, but I think it's just slightly yeah. in, um, and I'm absolutely loving it. All right, well, when I when I shoot some more in the Bronica, I'm definitely going to print some yeah. photos. Shoot, start shooting for print yeah. when you shoot here. Yeah. So there you have it guys, this wasn't really a review of any sort, just our impressions of our camera swap. Um, I think I'd love to do this again. Um, it was a nice exercise and a good way of shooting a different cam camera than what you normally do. Yeah, definitely, yeah. you know, um, and just look at the size difference of these two. So it was really great to tried the Bronica and it's safe to say that I really like the 645 factor. Um, the only thing that I wished this thing had was a rotating back and I would definitely be sold so maybe I should just get a 645 back like I mentioned. And uh, yeah, thank you so much Ishen. Really appreciate you, your Tepo. time and really appreciate you. It's an absolute uh, pleasure. Your Thank Bronica. you for letting me use your very expensive <laughs> Mamiya. <laughs> it's only a pleasure, my guy. It's only a pleasure. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to collaborate, if you want to do something similar with me, please just hit me up. Comment in the comment section. And uh, please do like this video. Follow my boy Ishen. I will link his uh, YouTube channel down uh, below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. <laughs>